lot of people tend to look at engineering as one of the harder degrees you can find in most universities. Personally, I've always done well when it came to physics, and I'm somewhat good when it comes to math, which is pretty much the backbone of fundamentals of mechanical engineering. However, there were definitely some subjects that made me struggle, and today I'll be presenting my personal list for the five most difficult courses I've taken as a mechanical engineering student. What's up guys, my name is Pan Pan, and today I'm starting off this brand new channel by talking about my list of the five most difficult engineering courses I've taken in my mechanical engineering degree. Number five on the list is going to be machine design slash design of machine elements. This is actually one of the more important classes in mechanical engineering. As the name implies, this class is all about the design methods of mechanical parts such as shafts, bearings, gears, springs, and so on. You need to have a solid foundation of basic physics, statics, and most importantly, mechanics of materials, or solid mechanics depending on what university you're from, and a little bit of math, of course. The reason this course was so difficult was because in engineering, there's a lot of iteration involved in the design process, and this applies to all engineering disciplines, not just mechanical engineering. So at the beginning of the problem, there's usually a lot of assumptions to be made. You're not going to have all the information in the world to come up with the perfect design on your first try, and you just have to go with your assumption through a long and tedious design process to make sure that your design is within the operational and safety standards you're not going to get it right on the first try and you just have to keep repeating the process until you do. And seriously, I'm not even joking. I've had problems that took up as much as 7 to 8 A4 pages. Also, a lot of information and equations taught in the class is empirical and not theoretical. What that means is essentially, instead of going through the long and tiring process of deriving an equation through rigorous mathematics and basic principles of physics, you simply develop a formula that's based around a set of data from experiments and tests. Because trust me, you do not want to analyze the strength of gears through mathematical derivation. There are millions of factors to consider, well, not millions, but you know, a lot. Velocity, temperature, surface condition, material hardness, tensile strength, just to name a few. It'll take so much work and time, it's not worth it. Discovering an equation for the strength of gears is surprisingly more difficult than discovering the equation for gravity. You know, even that requires experimental data for the uh, gravitational constant. And guess what? These empirical equations aren't very pretty, nor are they easy to memorize, because a lot of times they contain a lot of random coefficients that just don't have any meaning at all, which definitely doesn't help when the majority of my classmates voted for a closed book exam. Although to be fair, at least the professor included a formula sheet, however, one of the formulas on the sheet was wrong and it made me completely screw up a question on the midterm. Alright, next one. Number four on the list is going to be dynamics, and I feel like a lot of my fellow engineering students will agree with me on this. In fact, I'm just going to go on Google just to confirm this. Yeah. Alright, so dynamics is a class that teaches about the mechanics of objects and machines that are under acceleration. Moving things that change in speed, basically. It uses classical mechanics principles such as Newton's second law, Newton's third law, kinetic energy, potential energy, and momentum. And you might be thinking, hey, I already learned that in high school, it's not that hard. Well man, you haven't applied it to planetary gears, piston engines, and whatever the hell this is. The reason this is such a hard class for a lot of engineering students is not only because of the amount of math that's involved, but it actually requires you to imagine the machines actually working in synchronization in order to solve the problem. And this is a skill that not a lot of people have. See, the problem you're asked to solve is given on a two-dimensional static diagram on a piece of paper, but somehow you're supposed to create a thought experiment in your head and just imagine the machines actually working in the way that they're supposed to. And while the calculations aren't as tedious as in machine design, it's very easy to make mistakes. You'll be working a lot with vectors, so keeping track of all the magnitudes, i, j, and k components when you're doing calculations and dot products can be quite confusing. In the first half of the course, we only learned about particle dynamics, and it was relatively easy until we got to relative motion and momentum. And then things started getting really difficult on the last half of the course, where we started learning about rigid body dynamics. That's where all the vectors really started getting serious. Alright, moving on. Number three on the list is going to be basic electrical engineering. Yep, that's the name of the course. You might be thinking, why do mechanical engineers need to know anything about electrical engineering? 
And the answer to that is, I don't know. This class taught the basics of electronics like resistors, capacitors, inductors, Kirchhoff's laws, everything from high school physics pretty much in the first two weeks. And then we started getting into some of the more advanced stuff like circuit analysis methods such as superposition, Sevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, dependent and independent sources of electricity, node voltage analysis, mesh current analysis, transistors, bear with me, this was just the midterm. Now even though I love physics, I've always hated electronics and circuits, so you can imagine how excruciatingly painful this course was for me. This was the course I spent the most time studying for my second year. A lot of the fundamental principles just didn't click intuitively for me. I had to go through a lot of textbooks and YouTube videos just to find explanations for the same concepts, but worded differently so that I could hopefully understand one of them. And the finals, oh my god, the finals. It was almost like taking Mechanical Vibrations, a third year class, and applying it to circuits. We applied ordinary differential equations to RLC circuits. Then we learned the concept of phasers, which is like expressing sinusoidal functions in the form of Euler's formula and complex numbers. At the time, I had zero clue on what these even were, why we had to use them, and how they even work. Keep in mind that I was taking complex analysis and differential equations alongside this course. So it was like we were applying mathematical concepts that we learned yesterday to the electrical engineering that we're studying today, if that makes sense. Basically, if I didn't understand a thing from one of these math courses, I would have been completely lost in the electrical engineering class, which is exactly what happened. We were taught the concept of frequency domain, which is kind of what you need to know for Laplace transforms and Fourier transforms, Bode plots, high-pass filters, low-pass filters, and finally it all ended with op-amp. But the point is, there were just so many damn things crammed into this course, way beyond the scope of what mechanical engineers need to know. The fact that we had to use the math we were currently learning from other classes made it so much more difficult. Because normally the idea is that you learn a prerequisite from the previous semester, so you, that you can apply that knowledge to what you're learning in this semester. And that just simply wasn't the case here. Before we continue on with this video, I'd just like to say congratulations and thank you so much for making it this far into the video. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy what you see. And if you're currently in university or you've already graduated, I'd love to know which courses you felt were the most difficult for you. Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments. Number two on the list is going to be linear algebra and complex analysis. The reason I put these two together is, well, because they were taught in the same class at my university. Typically, these subjects would be separated into their own classes, but my university is kind of weird. So we had a class called Mathematics 3, and for the midterm, we learned Linear Algebra, whereas for the finals, we learned Complex Analysis. And there's not really much for me to say about this course, to be honest. I just found it difficult because I'm more comfortable with physics than I am with math. See, most people would start learning about complex numbers in high school. However, your boy here skipped the last two years of his high school and went straight to uni. I should make a video on that. Thing is, I just didn't have as much math background as a lot of my friends did, which made it a little more difficult for me. Wait, wait a sec, I forgot to tell you guys what this class is even about. Linear algebra is the study of linear functions and how to solve them. You'll be working a lot with vectors and matrices. You'll learn different methods of solving systems of linear equations, and you're going to have to memorize a lot of matrix operations. Vector span, vector spaces, vector subspaces, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, I've completely forgotten what those even are. For complex analysis, we learn about complex functions and calculus applied to them. Euler's equation, that's an important one. Hyperbolic functions, path integrals, Cauchy's Integral Theorem, I'm not even sure if I pronounced that correctly. Residue Theorem, I'm not a mathematical genius and I just couldn't get a lot of the concepts taught in this course. But still, this was not the most difficult course for me. And finally, number one, the hardest course for your boy, differential equations. A differential equation is an equation that relates one or more functions in terms of their derivatives. And in this class, we simply learned how to solve them. But the thing is, there are so many types of differential equations out there and you have to memorize so many techniques in order to solve them. We have to understand that to solve a differential equation, you need to be very good at integration. And integration is an art form. Some people are born with the ability to integrate in their heads, like Albert Einstein. And then there's people like me who just simply couldn't do it very proficiently. Is it possible to become very good at integration by practicing? Probably. Did I do it? No. I really wasn't lying when I said that I'm only somewhat good at math. In fact, I struggled so much with this subject, I had to sign up for tutoring for the finals. The midterm score was out of 40, and guess how much I got? 28? 24? 
can't be less than 20, right? I'm an honor student after all. Nope, your boy scored 16 out of 40. For real, the class average was like 18 and I was below that. I specifically bought this book because I thought that by forcing myself to spend money on this subject, it would actually motivate me to study on it more. I really should have spent more time on this subject, but because I hated integration so much, I just simply didn't. Don't be like me guys. If you're struggling at a particular subject, then please allocate more of your time to study for it. And that's pretty much it. Keep in mind that this is purely my personal list, meaning that if you went to a friend of mine and asked what their list of the hardest courses are, chances are it will be completely different to mine. Everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. Another thing to keep in mind is that I feel like the difficulty of a particular class depends so much on which university you attend and who's actually teaching the class because the amount of class content and material will vary from university to university and the difficulty of the exams is pretty much like 100% dependent on the professor and also how well the class is taught is dependent on the professor as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like down below. I have a lot of content planned for this channel, so be sure to subscribe to stay tuned.